Mark Stoops has done an incredible job of elevating Kentucky and keeping them relevant in the SEC East. They have been one of the more underdog teams in the SEC, and it's been fun to see what they can do. Not the season maybe they wanted last year, but now they get a chance to improve. And the 10 guys we'll talk about today will make them a a tough team to beat once again in 2023. When we look at this list, it's interesting to see how many guys we're going to talk about offensively because of the lack of success, the lack of explosive plays we saw from this group last year. The disparity between the offense and the defense was almost as bad as Iowa's. But when you look at the players they have returning, this should be a much better group in 2023. Dane Key will be one of those guys, the former freshman, the former four-star kid. It is a solid player for this offense, assuming that they can get explosive plays. They can give their new quarterback time to throw. And as a freshman, he was really good. Six touchdowns and 519 yards. He can take a step forward. And they just have to find a way to get him the football more. And that's going to be tough when you look at the players that they have returning. So there's a lot of talent coming back. And if they can open up the passing game a little bit more, Everybody will be fine. Everybody will be content. You won't have to lose. They didn't lose anybody to the transfer portal. And honestly, with how the things went last year, I'm shocked that they didn't lose any of these players that we're going to talk about today. A guy who's ready for a breakout season and maybe deserves to be higher on this list is Trevin Wallace, the linebacker who really took over the starting role thanks to some injuries, showed that he has NFL potential. And the numbers maybe don't say that with what he did last year, but when you look at what he can do, 54 tackles last year, five and a half tackles lost. Again, nothing crazy, but his skill set will translate well. And I know this coaching staff is really excited, and some of the media is really excited about what they saw from him last year and what they saw in the offseason. So that's a name to keep an eye on in terms of elevating because they do lose DeAndre Square, they lose Jarquez Jones, And, you know, you're looking at the the amount of talent that they lost. You would think maybe they're not in a great position, but Wallace is one of those guys that will make sure that the drop off isn't great. This is a defense that was tremendous last year. They were top 10 in a a few categories statistically, and it's because of the front seven. And I think this front seven could be just as good as it was last year. Another guy to keep an eye on is Deion Walker. I know this coaching staff, Mark Stoops has been kind of, quiet about raising his team and not necessarily quiet in terms of not saying anything at all, but he's not going overboard about praising guys, but I know players that he, that he likes and Deion Walker is one of them. The defensive tackle stands six foot six, 348 pounds. And he actually lost a little bit of weight in the off season. And you're looking at someone who can be one of the best defensive tackles in the sec, one of the best players defensively in the sec that's a name to keep an eye on and this front seven like i mentioned before is in good hands now flipping into the offensive side of the ball one of the the the, the positions to keep an eye on is the offensive line and Kenneth horsey is going back to play guard this year and that's a great position for him he did have to go back out to tackle and it just didn't work and they had to do out of necessity, but now they can they bring in a number of players that allow him to move into guard. And it'll be fun to see what they can do, especially because this group, uh, the offense was just not great last year. And you look at they allowed 47 sacks last year, 126 in the country. They have to protect the quarterback better. It doesn't matter if it's Will Levis or anybody else. You have to be able to protect the quarterback better. And with the talent they have returning to the skill positions, you just have to give the quarterback time or worse to let him distribute the football to be almost a game manager. That probably won't happen this year with who they have at quarterback, but this is a group that should be much better as long as they give their quarterback time. Now, a running back that they gave a chance to, and it's a, a player who didn't have the best production but someone who has incredible talent could be a big time player for them is Demi Sumo Konarag Bay. You're looking at a six foot 210 pound running back that again I think at NC State they had high hopes for him and they just didn't get to see that for a, a few reasons but he has the talent to be explosive he has the talent to be a reliable player a feature back in this offense and we're going to finally get a chance to see what he can do. Now you talked about we, we talked about the skill positions specifically at wide receiver. Barry and Brown is one of those guys that honestly is an, another 
former freshman, former four star that could have an explosive year in 2023. Again, this passing attack has so much potential to be incredible this year. And the talent they have returning shows that they should have bigger numbers this season. And guys like Brown, guys like Dane Key will play a, a big role in that. And that's just the start. And you have two freshmen that should be extremely explosive. It's just a matter of getting them the football. The defense is kind of the same way going back to a guy that gets a lot of attention for his six fingers. But I think that you look at the play, as long as he stays healthy, J.J. Weaver could be one of the most explosive and dangerous players on the edge or wherever they decide to play him. He is someone that can have a major impact on football games. And again, it's just a matter of keeping him healthy. And at 6'5", 245 pounds, no one is pushing him around. He knows how to utilize his talent. He knows how to utilize his power and his strength. So keeping him on the field is going to be the biggest thing for this coaching staff. The offense, again, is in good hands. It's just a matter of putting it together, giving the quarterback time, open up running lanes. And Ray Davis comes in from Vanderbilt, the former Temple transfer as well, showcased what he could do and took his game in the next level. Now he takes another challenge of playing on a better team in Kentucky instead of just Vanderbilt. 5'10", 216 pounds, maybe not the the biggest running back, but he is a productive player with over 2,500 yards in his career. And again, the skill positions are in great hands. Another wide receiver, you could maybe say he's too high on this list, but Tavion Robinson at his peak is an absolute nightmare to cover. And if you got guys like Dane Key and Barry and Brown running on the outside and you have Tavion Robinson dominating in the slot, this offense has a lot of potential to be tremendously better, especially because I don't think the, the defense can be just as good as it was last year, but they have the opportunity to potentially rely on the offense to take a step forward. And I think if you just close the gap between those two, you'll see a better team. And Tavion Robinson is one of those players that can make that happen. Now, the biggest player in terms of the X factor of the offense is Devin Leary. The NC State transfer is didn't have the best season last year, and there were a couple different things, injuries and whatnot, that affected that. But when you look at over 6,800 yards, 62 touchdowns, just 16 interceptions, the one thing that I think Kentucky fans – will really like about Devin Leary is the accuracy. You're going to see a player who one of the biggest things we talked about with Will Levis. And honestly, from the beginning of the Will Levis hype, this was something that I, I was pointing out is this Will Levis is not the most accurate quarterback. And yes, he has these intangibles and has this arm strength, this arm talent that's really exciting, but it doesn't matter if you can't hit anybody downfield. So that's one thing to keep an eye on. Devin Leary apparently has already looked really good in terms of accuracy in the spring, in the offseason, and that's something that will help this group a, a ton. We talked about the skill positions, what they have available, and at worst, like I said, Devin Leary is not a game manager, but there are times where, honestly, just get a guy the football and let him do the work. Now, what do we see from this group as a whole? Kentucky is a team that just continues to be consistent. Now, whether that means 7-6, and six, Ten and three don't really know yet. Now they're not going to compete with Georgia. They will not be competing with the best of the best in the SEC. But you might see an upset or two along the way. Teams that are not taking this group seriously. I I believe that this group can be much better. And when you look at the schedule, they can build some momentum. Ball State, Eastern Kentucky, and Akron aren't exactly super challenging games. At Vanderbilt, it's up in the air right now. Florida is obviously figuring things out. And you pretty much get into the month of October with a potential undefeated start. Now, obviously, the Georgia game will be very different. And the, the stretch from there at the end is very different than the first stretch. But you're looking at a team that could be much better than it was last year. If you build enough momentum in those first five games, I'm not saying that Kentucky can beat Georgia, but that game is much more interesting than if you lose to Vanderbilt or you struggle against those first three teams. I don't think they're going to lose to those three teams, but if you struggle against those, then maybe you either need more time or you're not as good as you thought. But I believe Kentucky will be better than a lot of people think. Again, this is a fun team to watch. 
maybe an underrated group because of the amount of talent you're talking about in the SEC East with teams. Everybody focuses on Georgia and Tennessee. So Kentucky kind of flies under the radar, doesn't get as much love as they should. And it'll be fun to see how do they respond to teams overlooking them, to people overlooking them in 2023.